I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I started an eco-conscious pottery company called Oxford Clay. So I don't just make pottery, I make resources for other potters wanting to be more eco-friendly in their pottery practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about sharing everything I've learned along my eco-conscious pottery journey with you. And I'm so glad you're here with me. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson. And in today's episode, I'm really excited to share with you um, some tool swaps that we can do really easily in pottery that will, that will improve the kind of eco-consciousness of, of our pottery practice. So pottery tools, obviously you don't need any tools to make pottery. You know, you can just like hand build stuff, um, you know, and then fire it. But, um, but um, there are quite a lot of pottery tools that are used um, that will that really kind of like help you know help a pottery practice and um, it sort of got me thinking recently about you know what are the tools that I use where are they where are they coming from what are they made from and just really thinking about you know the the choices I made in terms of like you know what I could use instead basically so I just wanted to talk to you really about three tools in particular that I have um, uh, that I have like consciously used in my practice instead of other tools um, because of the environmental impact um, of those other tools. Okay, so let's get started. <laughs> so, um, so the first tool, which is like a super essential tool in pottery, is actually a sponge. And um, when I did pottery classes, um, we had this like uh, pottery evening classes, we had this like big kind of um, like box of sponges and they were uh, there were so different there were loads of different types of sponges so many different types of sponges in there so there was a natural sponge which was like you know um, a marine sponge uh, there was a yes yeah, also called sometimes natural sponge there was there were plastic sponges in there that um, that were just from the supermarket and then there were yeah and there were also these huge uh, plastic sponges which I think are used for maybe like cleaning cars or something <laughs> and they were like these absolutely massive ones um, and we would use them for like cleaning the tables and then we also had cellulose sponges as well so they're sponges that are made from plant fiber um, and they, they can be found in like DIY stores. Yeah, so we had quite a range of sponges there at the, at the class. Um, and when I started my own pottery practice, I was thinking about sponges because um, traditionally um, the marine sponge, the natural sponge, um, is, is used frequently by potters because it's very, very soft. So, you know, it's great to have a very soft sponge in pottery because it doesn't like drag on your work. It doesn't like leave, you know, marks on your work. Quite often you'll be using quite wet clay, you know, and maybe you're sponging wet clay and you, you don't want a sponge which has got like a sort of, I don't know how to describe it, like almost like a grain to it because it's gonna leave those marks like in your, you know, you need it really soft. It's gonna leave marks in your work if you're dragging across, you know, a sponge which is quite, um, you know, it's, it's quite hard sort of thing. So that's why lots of potters use marine sponges. Um, but the thing is, marine sponges are actually, they're actually classified as animals um, for various reasons. Um, and um, yeah, one of those reasons is the way they reproduce. And another reason, I think, is that they can move around as larvae when they're little. <laughs> so um, I think, th yeah, there's a couple of things that, that classify them as animals. Um, but um, yeah, so the thing is, when they're when they're harvested, that is the animal being harvested basically um, from the sea. So they're taken from the sea, and then they're left to die basically out of the water. And then when they're um, when they're they're then rinsed away, and then what you're using, which is the sponge, is actually the animal's skeleton. So I mean, I just thought, I wonder if there are other sponges I could use instead because. Um, I knew there were loads of other sort of options out there. So I was sort of investigating and um, yeah, and a cellulose sponge kind of popped up as like the best option. So cellulose sponges, they're made from plant fibers, wood fibers. And um, although like they aren't, I would say they're not as soft as um, 
marine sponges as natural sponges they are a really good alternative like um yeah especially they, they're very hard when you have them dry but when you um wet them they do turn into like a very soft sponge um and the really good thing about them is they biodegrade as well unlike um, plastic sponges which take much longer to biodegrade so in landfill i looked this up and it, apparently it takes at least 58 years for um, a plastic sponge to biodegrade in landfill cellulose sponges yeah they're very cheap and affordable and you can actually you can get them from the supermarket or you can get them like i said from like a hardware store um yeah so they are like so cellulose sponges is something that i i universally use just in my pottery practice now and i use a big one from the kind of hardware shop which is like you know more for like decorating i use that for like you know cleaning surfaces um cleaning tools cleaning my hands and then i use um i cut them up and do like a smaller one um have a smaller one which i use actually for um doing work on the wheels so they're they're, they're definitely soft enough to be like you know doing that delicate work when you're making a pot you know you're dipping the sponge inside um you're cleaning the outside of the sponge cellulose sponges are absolutely fantastic for that and um yeah i would highly recommend them so yeah so think about per perhaps you know what sponge you're using and um, could it be swapped, basically? Um, so the next thing I wanted to tell you about it are um, that I've switched in my practice are um, paintbrushes. So paintbrushes are really important in potter, you know, to <laughs> to potters. So I actually use them um, <clears throat> for loads of different things. I use them for painting on slip. Uh, <clears throat> if I'm joining two things together, I use them for um, you know painting on glaze. Um, I sometimes use a really big one for painting on like a sort of background glaze or I use a smaller one for painting on, you know, intricate colour work um, with recycled metal oxides. So, you know, paintbrushes are, they are super important in pottery. If you want to kind of paint any work, um, you know, in glaze work, then, then you, you need, you need a, you need a, you need a paintbrush. Um, so the, yeah, the main thing to say about paintbrushes is that when they're, um, lots of art paintbrushes are actually made from animal hair um, and um, I think that's because animal hair paintbrushes are considered um, really kind of superior to synthetic brushes so there's a brush called like the sable um, sable brush and that is like considered like the best paintbrush in the world um, but the thing with animal hair paintbrushes is that they often are made with animals in the fur industry you know that have been raised in captivity um for their fur basically and um there are so many alternatives you know available like synthetic brushes so um i use a combination actually of kind of you know maybe um for very fine work i use a, a paintbrush an art paintbrush which is synthetic but i also use a combination of uh, makeup brushes um for my work as well so there's a brush called a hake brush actually which is used in pottery um, often for painting on uh, glaze so it's a very wide flat brush and it's dipped in glaze and then um, it's used like across a pot just to paint on glaze and that's usually made from goat hairs but um, I've actually found that you can get a similar effect by using makeup brushes so I use um, like a big sort of bronzer brush or a blusher brush um, and dip that in in glaze and that is a very similar effect to using a hake brush so it holds a lot of glaze it brushes it it's very soft brushes it across your work um, yeah and so I think the really good thing about makeup brushes is that um, you can tell that they're synthetic they'll often say it's quite a good sort of um, they'll often say this is a synthetic brush or this is vegan friendly there's a very good sort of standard in the makeup industry of like saying whether a product is like vegan friendly or not so they yeah they have more of a kind of um practice of that rather than in the art world when um you know you might just have to like ask is this a synthetic brush or not um but yeah an art supplier would would know and like quite often i've seen packets of brushes and they'll say this is synthetic packets of art brushes um yeah so that's another thing to say so that's another thing i've swapped um yeah they can actually be cheaper as well um and they last longer as well um ones that are paint brushes that are made from synthetic fibers do tend to last better last longer um 
Right, so, okay, so they, those are the, the two of the tools that I made a sort of conscious decision to swap. And um, the other one, the other one actually is something that I saw in a book. Um, um, so it's, um, I saw this technique in a book that were using um, chamois leather. And so what the, what the person who'd written the book suggested is that you have damp chamois leather that you stretch over a board um, and then you use um, use the flat, so you stretch it over this flat board and then you use it to kind of twist your pot on top of um, the board, on top of the leather. And that makes a very flat rim or a very flat base. So this technique, uh, yeah, when I saw it, I was like, what an amazing technique, because I think the flat base thing, especially for me, is um, something that um, can be really tricky. So. Um, I tried this technique with a um, tea towel, a cotton tea towel. So I thought, well, I don't really want, I don't want to use chamois leather and I also don't have a big piece of sh chamois leather. <laughs> but um, yeah, and also I'm not, I'm consciously not using sort of animal products in, in my pottery practice. So I decided let's try it with a, you know, just a normal cotton tea towel cloth. So the the grain of the cloth is very tight because it, it's a, like a nice like cotton tea towel. Um, and so yeah, the weave is very tight. So it's not going to make like marks on, on my pot as I'm doing it. But I dip it in water, I stretch it across a very flat board, and then I twist the base of my pots on it. And it's amazing. It makes a really flat base. So just to say, some things that chamois leather are used for in pottery, you can just use like a tea towel instead. So if you've ever like seen this this technique done, I've never seen it done in person, but I, like I said, I read it in a book and I thought that's a great technique, but yeah, you can do it with like non-animal products instead. Um, and um, yeah, so another thing that potters use chamois leather for is they can often use a piece of chamois leather for the rim, like smoothing the rim of a pot, sort of as on the wheel as it's being made. Um, and that's not something I've ever done actually, um, but I have seen other potters do it in my classes that I've been to, evening classes. So um, just to say, this is something that you can actually just use your hand, that, that's what I use, or a sponge. You can use a very, you know, like a cellulose sponge like we were talking about, a very soft sponge. Sometimes I use a sponge as well, but you can get, you know, that smooth rim um, effect with other things. I actually watched a YouTube video as well once um, where someone was using a, a plastic bag, like just a piece of plastic bag, and they were smoothing the rim with that. So it doesn't have to be chamois leather is what I'm saying. It can be loads of different things and you can get a really smooth rim. <laughs> the person on YouTube using the plastic bag did get like a really, a really smooth rim. So um, yeah, <laughs> you can definitely switch out chamois leather for um, plastic bag, <laughs> cotton cloth, <laughs> um, your hand sponge. So um, yeah, so yeah, so okay, so those are the three main things I wanted to tell you about in terms of material swaps. Um, yeah, I mean, like, um, it's obviously up to every potter, you know, what materials they're using and stuff. But I just wanted to give you some ideas, you know, like the things that I'd swapped and how easy they were to swap, especially, I think especially for me, the paintbrushes and sponge and cloth, they're just all really easily available things. Um, you know, you can just swap yourself extremely easily. Um, yeah, so, oh, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, happy potting. So if you enjoyed that and you're interested to learn more about eco-conscious pottery, head over to the Oxford Clay website, which is www.oxfordclay.co.uk. I can't wait to see you there.